So, getting into arrays. From this course, a natural way to organize and store data is in the form of lists. In JavaScript, a list is called an array. Think of all the ways you can use and how many of the items in the app... Wait. Think of all the apps you use and how many of the items in the app are organized into lists. For example, a Twitter feed is a list of posts, an online store is a list of products, the state of a chess game is a list of moves, this list is a list of things that are lists. That's kind of cute. Arrays are declared using square brackets with commas separating each item. Let inventory equal, quote, iron best breastplate, comma, quote, healing potion, comma, quote, leather scraps. Arrays can contain any data type. In our example above, we have an array of strings. Yes, but can they contain different data types within the array? That's a thing I don't remember about JavaScript. Assignment. Let's work on Fantasy Quest's inventory. We can store items the player is carrying in an array. Add a short sword to the end of the array. So we have let inventory equal square bracket, healing potion, leather scraps, iron helmet, bread, and let's continue with... Uh, before I do that, I want to see what happens if I try to add 55. Is that allowed? That is apparently allowed, but it's not what the question is looking for, so let's add in short sword. Oh, this thing isn't bouncing anymore. I kind of missed the bounce. Oh, I need to run. And then it bounces. Okay. Healing potion, leather scraps, iron helmet, bread, short sword. And it prints them without spaces on the printout, even though we gave it spaces here. So those spaces are not very meaningful to the computer. Exercise two, arrays continued. Sometimes when we're manually creating ar arrays, it can be hard to read if all the items are on the same line of code. We can declare the array using multiple lines if we want to. Let flower types equal square bracket daffodil rose chrysanthemum. Keep in mind that this is only a styling change. The code will run correctly either way. When would you declare an array on multiple lines? The answer that I've already given is when there are many items and it's hard to read them all on one line. And that's the correct answer, so let's move forward. Uh, this, is review, this is review, so we'll move to the question. Which types can be stored in an array? Strings, numbers, all of them, or booleans? The answer is all of them. Counting and programming. In the world of programming, even counting is strange. We don't start counting at 1, we start at 0 instead. Indexes. Each item in an array has an index that refers to its spot in the array. Take the following array as an example. Bob, Lane, Alice, Brianna. Index 0 is Bob, 1 is Lane, 2 is Alice, and 3 is Brianna. The question says which index refers to the, to the second item in an array. Here we've got Bob and then Lane. Lane is the second item, and Lane goes at index 1. There was a way of speaking I kind of invented for myself, which is, um, you know, you can say, like, the first and the second and the third. Well, you can say the zeroth, and then you can say the oneth and the twoth, which, is, which sounds funny, but helps me, ref helps me in my mind to remember that I'm referring to indexes from a zero index. Array access. Now that we know how to create new arrays, we need to know how to access specific items in the array. We access items in an array directly by using their index. The syntax is as followed. Let best languages equal JavaScript, Go, Rust, Python, C. Well, this is an opinionated course. Console.log best languages bracket 1. Prints go because index one was provided. So if we count from zero to one, there we have there we have go. 
Assignment. We need to allow our players to access items within their inventory. Change the value of item index to the index in inventory that holds the value leather scraps. So we want to pull out leather scraps. We count 0, 1. Item index equal 1. Let item equal inventory at item index. Let's run. Correct. Great job. Very cool. Array length. Arrays have a property that allows us to easily get the current length of the array. The length of the array is equal to the number of items present. Don't be fooled by the fact that the length isn't equal to the index of the last element. In fact, it will always be one greater. Let's look at why it will always be one greater. If we have indexes with el with element with if we have oh my if we have elements with indexes 0, 1, and 2. Why did that oh because I did tab. Okay. We have a length of three. Um, so that's why it's always going to be one greater. The length of the array is equal to the number of items present. Don't be fooled. Yeah, we said that. You can get the length of the array by adding dot length to the end of the array variable. So let my array equal index 0, index 1, index 2, console.log, myarray.length, prints 3. Assignment. Some of our players' inventories are huge, so looking through the entire list is cumbersome. So looking through the entire list is cumbersome. Let's make an easy way for them to see the last item in their inventory. Set the last index variable equal to the length of the inventory array minus one. You will need to use the dot length property. Let's just check how long this is. Oh wow, it goes on and on and on and on and on. Ending with an iron bar. I bet someone had fun coming up with all the things to put in that phony list. Okay, let last index equal items dot length minus one. And then they'll say last let last item equal items at last index. Again, the square bracket to access the item at the index. Correct. Great job. I love the dancing arrow up here. Array updates. We can change the item that exists at a given index. For example, we can change leather to leather armor in the inventory array in the following way. Let inventory equal leather, healing potion, and so on. Inventory at zero equals leather armor, and the inventory array now equals leather, ar leather armor, healing potion, iron ore. Assignment. We need to update the items in our player's inventory when they smelt iron into an iron bar. Update the iron ore element in the array to be an iron bar. You know, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to just type iron bar right there, but that's not really the spirit of the exercise. So in inventory at position, what is this? This is 2 equals iron bar. That should do it. Yep. Exercise 8. Push values. It's common to create an empty array and then fill it with values using a loop. We can add values to the end of the array using the push method. Let cards equal empty list, cards.push, NVIDIA, cards.push, AMD. The cards array is now NVIDIA and AMD. Assignment. We need to generate a unique user ID for each player in the game. An ID is just a unique number. <laughs> Use a loop to add unique IDs of 0 to 99 to the player ID's array. So it's just player IDs dot push, and we push I, and then we have it goes from 0 all the way up to 99 because it's less than 100. Remember our, how our loops still we, we have i equals 0, that's the starting point. i less than 100, that's the condition to continue. And i++, plus plus, that's the change that happens after each iteration of the loop. Pop values, exercise 9. 
Pop is the opposite of push. Pop removes the last element from the array and returns it for use. For example, let vegetables equal broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, kale, tomato. Last vegetable equals vegetables.pop. Now last vegetable equals tomato, because that was the last one in the list. And the vegetables equals broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, and kale. Assignment. Our player is selling the items in their inventory to the vendor. Pop and print all the elements from the existing array using a loop. So it's using i minus minus, which is why it starts at inventory.length minus one. That's the last index, if you remember from before. We're using i greater than or equal to zero as the continue condition, and i minus minus as the update. We're saying let item equal inventory dot pop. And it's going to say console.log selling item. At the end, console.log inventory should show an empty list or an empty array. There's that empty array down at the bottom. Down at the bottom. Oh, come on. There it is, highlighted down at the bottom. And it's selling each of the items. Okay, going on to the next one. Exercise 10 of 14. Counting. Remember from the first course that we can iterate count over all the items in an array using a loop. For example, the following code will print each, print each item in the sports array. For let i equal zero, i less than sports.length, i plus plus, curly brace, console.log sports i. Assignment. Our players need a way to see how many copies of a specific item they have within their inventory. Within the loop, count how many times potion, bread, and short sword appear using the potion count, bread count, and short sword count variables, respectively. So I see we've got some um, some template code here already made up. We have i is zero, i less than items dot length, so it's gonna catch index 0, index 1, index 2, all the way up to index length minus 1. And for each of those, um, I'm actually going to say let item equal items at position i. And then if item triple equal potion we can say potion count plus plus an else condition else if item triple equal bread we can take bread count do bread count plus plus finally else if item equal triple equal short sword that's one word apparently take short sword count give that a plus plus and let's run that you have four potions you have six pieces of bread you have three short swords okay that's good that sounds good exercise 11 or of syntax. With newer versions of JavaScript, we can now use a clean syntax to loop over an array without keeping track of the index manually. Instead of index space iterations, so we have things like woods equal oak, pine, maple, or let i equal zero, i less than woods.length, i plus plus, braces is for, braces is in console.log woods i, Let woods equal oak, pine, maple, or let wood of woods, console.log wood. It's kind of like we came in here and added a line that says let wood equal woods i, and then console.log wood. And they're effectively doing the same thing. Wood, the variable declared using the of keyword, directly accesses the value in the array rather than the index of the value. If we don't need to update the item the only and only need to access its value, then this is a more clean way to write the code. When should we use 
four of syntax, one option was when we want to write code that is harder to read. That's that's not a great reason. Uh, when we need our code to be faster, well, it doesn't. I think under the hood it does the same things, but the answer is when we don't need to know the index, just the value. That's that's the time when we use it. And this is more about four of syntax. Which is considered more clean, assuming both options will work. Four of is the considered more clean, and I would say that's because it's just easier to read. Look at all this mucking about with indices and and i equals such and such and semicolons. Here it's just let wood of woods. So that's that. Find the difference. We need to keep track of each character's levels in an array. When, somebody, when someone's level changes, we want to know about it so we can congratulate them. Find any differences between old character levels and new character levels. When you find one, print the index where the levels are different. Loop over both arrays at the same time and print the indexes where the items in the arrays differ. For example, if the arrays were Oh, I, I, I may have missed when TV Josh said, Hell yeah, Neo. Uh, what was that in reference to? Sorry, I missed that. Let array 1 equal 25375. Let array 2 equal 251978. Your code would print 2 and 4. TP Josh says you got the answer. Um, like on this thing? Huh. Okay. Um, what we need here is the condition. And this code seems to be assuming that the lengths of the arrays are the same, and it looks like they are. If old character levels at position i triple equals new character levels at position i oh except when you want them to be not equal so do i want not double equal or not equal i think it comes out to the same because the types are the same so i'll i think earlier it said programmers tend to use not double equal. All right, let's try that. Correct, great job. TV Josh says, yeah, okay, cool. Um, going on to 14. Well, let's, let's review what happened here. We, ha we have an if statement and the condition is old character level at I, so like, here and new character level at i so there and if they're not equal console.log i okay moving forward okay create an array of odd numbers assignment create an array of the odd numbers between 0 and 299 inclusive um looks like it, want, it looks like it's setting us up to write an if condition, but I'm actually going to use the trick from before and say i plus equals 2 and say odd numbers dot push i. Remember, uh, dot push will add i to the end of the array. Let's try that. Correct? Great job. Okay. That does it for chapter 1. Let's see what's in chap let's see what's in the next chapter.